And so the video begins. Someone's in a hurry to gamble. Welcome to Tampa's Hard Rock, Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Our giant casino right off of Interstate 4. It's right back there, the Florida State Fairgrounds, right over the bridge there. This is on the very east side of Tampa. That's a giant guitar. Just like you'd see out in Las Vegas. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome if it's your first time. If you're ready to rock or gamble, you're in the right place. There's much ahead. Well, since my baby left me, I found a new place to dwell. It's down at the end of Lonely Street at the Hard Rock Hotel. Change the lyrics. Elvis Presley fan here, Tampa J. Back at it again. Today, I'm going to explore the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. There's tons of music memorabilia inside, including Elvis Presley's 24 karat gold plated piano. It's a busy intersection. That is East Hillsborough Avenue, Highway 92, Interstate 4, right behind the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. If you come to Tampa from Orlando, you pass it every time. More so, you see this big building up here. I was out here five years ago when they debuted Elvis's gold piano and built the atrium, and I shared that, but I didn't really go into detail. I didn't really show the casino. I came back to check out that piano once again and just to explore the casino. You guys wanna take a look? And this casino is open 24 hours a day, and it's one of the only places in Tampa where you can eat 24 hours a day. They have a food court, and also, they have a place where you can get late night sushi, which I've done many years ago. I think that place is still here. I'm kind of hungry, so maybe I'll get sushi, maybe I'll get something in the food court, but food will be involved in today's video. Of course, it always is. If you look over here, there's a quote above that walkway from the parking garage to the casino. And it looks like ACDC said something. For those about to rock, we salute you. Basically saying, for those about to gamble, Hope you win. And right inside the main doors of the first level, right when you walk in, you're greeted by Elvis's 24 karat gold grand piano. I just can't miss with a good luck charm like you. Elvis's quote right there above the piano. And this atrium was completed in 2019. The first time I came out here, Elvis's piano sits right here in the center before the main door. Beautifully displayed. There's several guitars, Elvis's guitars, encompassed in the in the wall there before the curved escalators. We're gonna take a look at those. These are the tallest curved escalators in the world. Now, I've gone on record many times saying how much I hate escalators. These are actually kind of cool. I'll ride these. This jaw-dropping grand piano, adorned with 24 karat gold leaf, originally manufactured by Kimball in 1928. Elvis purchased it secondhand for his mother in 1955. At that time, the instrument had a humble walnut finish, much like any number of home pianos that were popular in the 50s. Elvis moved the piano to Graceland after his mother passed away and Priscilla Presley had the gold leaf added as a gift for their first wedding anniversary in 1968. This instrument is a perfect example of the King's Grandu aesthetic at the height of his fame and is one of the true treasures of the Hard Rock collection. The king of rock and roll, Elvis, sat right there on that bench and played that piano at Graceland. That's really cool to think about. I hope you big Elvis fans out there have a chance to come check this piano out for yourself. Elvis Presley, the killer old 1957 Gibson J200 was featured in the film Elvis and Me. This is the guitar that he's playing inside Elvis and Me. Displayed right here across from the piano. One of a few guitars. Check that out. Beautiful. I have an old Gibson acoustic guitar in 1956 at home. I've shown it a couple times. Not this cool. Elvis definitely didn't play it. And not in this great of shape. That's awesome. Elvis played that guitar. And here's a photo right here before the door. Just a nice little accent. One of Elvis's most famous performances right there in that white suit. And 
here's the second of two. I thought there were more, but there's only two right here. This gorgeous Gibson Dove acoustic is among the most historic guitars in the hard rock collection. It belonged to Elvis Presley and was used on stage during the later part of his career in the mid-70s. That's what the sign's saying right here. Notice it has the dove written up there on the neck and the stem. And then it has a dove right there on the pick guard. It's a beautiful guitar. It says Dove Custom. And this is the one that Elvis played. You can actually see some uh, pick scratches behind the uh, strings there. Hold on one second. You see the pick scratch, like a downward moment? That could actually uh, have been from Elvis playing the guitar. I'm gonna assume it was. It's a really cool addition. I remember coming out here almost five years ago and being blown away. I always enjoy coming back here and seeing this. I've been back here once before since the first time I came out here with Chris the Girl. I gave her a little tour of the casino, which I'm about to do for you guys. There's still so much to see. So much stuff in here. If you're into music, if you love rock and roll, much ahead. And here it goes. The world's tallest set of curved escalators. As you can see, it curves up the wall. And then there's another one right there. There's the piano. Nice view from here, check this out. And then there's a casino out to the left, as you can see. At some point, I'm gonna check out some of these slot machines. A lot of people getting their pictures with the piano, of course. Oh, you can see right down into it there. That's a good view of it. Here's a great bird's eye view of the piano. Look, you can see down inside of it. I'm gonna zoom in. Beautiful. You can see the name. See that? Kimball Company, 1928, same year as Mickey Mouse. That's how my mind works. See a better view of the chandelier up here too, look at this. That's cool. And just right above the Elvis's grand piano, beyond the escalators, is the smoke-free zone. This is the smoke-free casino. So if you wanna come out to the casino and you don't enjoy the, the smoke and whatnot, you can come over here and gamble smoke-free. Got a lot of stuff in there too, including a couple bars and restaurants. It's always been cool that we have a giant hotel and casino right here in our backyard here in Tampa. I visited this casino many of times with my family. Specifically around the holidays, we have uh, friends and family in town. They want to go do something late at night. This is an easy place to come, get food, walk around, see cool stuff. If you can deal with the smoke, that's about it. It's pretty cool. And down this hallway right here several, several windows of memorabilia. We start here with these guitars. The top one, Drew Taubenfeld, Selena Gomez's guitars. And this guitar right here, this Gibson, which reminds me of Marty McFly's guitar, was played by Britney Spears' guitarist, Zach Comtois. I know I'm probably butchering that name. It's a Gibson ES-335 on stage with a pop pipe con from 2015 to 2016. It looks like Britney Spears may have actually signed it. Several awesome things right here. Check this out, this whole wall. We'll get to these bottom ones here in a second, but right up there we'll start with Jim Cale's bass from the Guess Who. Check this out. My dad was a huge fan of the Guess Who. I am too. No sugar tonight in my coffee. No sugar tonight in my tea. I love the Who and I love the Guess Who, but I think I like the Guess Who a little more. That's a cool bass. Also, American Woman. Yep. It was the Guess Who who sang that song, not, not Lenny Kravitz. So originally, the Guess Who sang it. I like Lenny's version though. Really cool. Jim Cale played that bass when recording American Woman. That's awesome. Jimi Hendrix scarf. Jimi Hendrix wore that scarf. That I'm getting goosebumps on my goosebumps. Huge fan. Legend. One of the greatest guitar players of all time. It says right here, this colorful scarf was owned and worn by Jimi Hendrix in the late 60s, including 
at his career making appearance at the Monterey Pop Festival in 1967. If you see any photos or videos of the Monterey Pop Festival, Jimmy will be wearing this scarf before us right here that sits in Tampa. That is wild. Check this out. That's better. You can make out some of the flowers on that scarf. I'm a big fan of Fleetwood Mac and Stevie Nicks. This is Stevie Nicks' dress. It says on the sign that this dress was purchased at a shop that was owned by Stevie Nicks' mother herself. This outfit worn by guitarist Steve Vai, who played with Frank Zappa. Looks like he wore this on stage throughout his 2000 world tour. I like the style there, the skull and crossbones. Steve Vai. Beyonce wore this dress. Check this out. There's some information in the bottom. I'm gonna read it to you. The first true global superstar of the 21st century, Beyonce Knowles has matured into an artist of undeniable power and influence. She wore this Laquan Smith design outfit to launch the event for Jay-Z's music streaming service. Probably seen this before on video. Definitely seen it before on Beyonce. Right next to it, Nicki Minaj wore this outfit. Looks like hip hop megastar Nicki Minaj wore this uh, sequin jumpsuit on stage during her pink print world tour in 2015. So she wore this on tour. Now it sits here in Tampa. Doesn't say who wore them, but these snakeskin cowboy boots worn by a member of Pantera. I wonder who wore those. I bet we could figure it out. It's funny, it doesn't say who wore them. Legendary songwriter and musician Joni Mitchell is widely regarded as one of the most important artists of the classic rock era, and her influence echoes well into the 21st century. She owned and wore this stylish belt. I like that belt buckle, isn't it? Awesome. It's got a flower on there. Joni Mitchell's belt and belt buckle. Carrie Underwood. I was waiting my turn to look at this dress and there was a, uh, I'd say an elderly lady came up and just said, looked at it and shook her head and she said, it's just so ugly. That, that was her exact words as she walked off. She wore this Echo Couture dress when she appeared on the American Music Awards broadcast in 2012. I have seen Carrie Underwood in concert here in Tampa before, right after she finished up with American Idol, she was on tour with Kenny Chesney. And yeah, I went to a Kenny Chesney concert. She was there with many other country artists, but I remember watching her set and being like, hey, that's the that's the girl that was just on American Idol. Now look at her. I don't think it's ugly, I think it's cool. It's a cool dress. I mean, I, I wouldn't wear it, but I like it. I'm trying to do the best I can do with the glare, but these shoes right here, worn by Aerosmith, Guitarist Joe Perry. Joe Perry, not to be confused with Steve Perry, their journey. Some cool shoes. I don't know if I'd wear those either, but they're cool. Signed guitar by guitarist Tom Kiefer of Cinderella. Cinderella was a bluesy rock and roll outfit with a real soul. Frontman Tom Kiefer owned this unusual Gibson Les Paul recording model in the 90s. There you go, Cinderella. Also a awesome rock band from the 80s. And this dress worn by Cher. This is Chris the girl's favorite. I brought her over here to see this the last time we were here. This dress worn by Cher was designed by Bob Mackie. If you're into fashion, you probably know that name. I don't, I don't know it, but he's probably really famous for Cher to wear this. She owned and wore this dress uh, it's a poncho, it's like a poncho outfit quilt. Not much information down there, just a little bit. All kinds of eateries and coffee shops in here. This one's called Constant Grind. It's also a bakery. They've got a beautiful giant cake displayed right here in the main atrium before the counter. This is really cool, it's really nice. If I need a coffee, I'll probably stop in here and get one. I just had one though, so. You can just come in here and get coffee if you wanted to. 
This is still the second level, the Smoke Free Casino there behind me. We're gonna head down these escalators. There's so much more casino. Paul McCartney of the Beatles. This suit was worn by Paul McCartney in a hard day's night. This is his screen used suit that you see him in that movie. I did not know this was here. This is incredible, huge fan of the Beatles. Wow. You can see it's got some age to it. That would have been in 1964. Holy cow. That's incredible. Paul McCartney. Incredible. And then right next to it, Bette Midler, legend Bette Midler, two legends right next to each other. Diva Bette Midler wore this satin gown in 1977 while performing in Edith Piaf classic La Vie en Rose. During her television special, Oh Red Hair is Back, this gown was designed also by fame clother Bob Mackey. Same that designed chair stress that we just saw upstairs. Aerosmith Steven Tyler's snakeskin suit that he wore on stage. Not anything specific of when he wore it, but it just says there on the sign that he did wear this. Love me some Aerosmith. And then right next door, the second pink dress we've seen worn by Nicki Minaj. There's several shops in here. You can buy clothes. I love this golden statue of Muhammad Ali standing before the door of this place. It's called uh, Macchio Paris. Also, there's a giant sculpture of Kobe Bryant. And Beatles fans, specifically John Lennon fans, our greatest piece of Beatles wardrobe. This is a brown suede jacket worn by John Lennon on the cover of the Beatles landmark album, Rubber Soul, in 1965. This jacket was not part of any band uniform, and in many ways it represents John's boredom with the machinery of the Beatles' image. By 1965, he just wanted to look cool and be comfortable. This jacket fit the bill nicely. It's one of the most treasured pieces in the Hard Rock collection, of course. John Lennon. We've been to Strawberry Fields last spring in New York. I went with Adam the Woo to John and Yoko's first New York City apartment. It's incredible. He was wearing that. Amazing. Very hard to see through the glass, but these are sketches done by John to Yoko Ono. It looks like, I don't know what's going on here, but these are actually drawn by John Lennon. Okay, there's more of them on the other side of the jacket. That's John and Yoko, drawn by John Lennon. This is the top one. Here's the middle one, and there's the first one. This is just an awesome display and tribute to John Lennon. There's the drawings, the jacket in the middle, and then the other three drawings on the other side. Incredible. Awesome. Hope you Beatles fans and John Lennon fans enjoyed that. I sure did. And you can see the reflection of the slot machines behind me. I am in the main casino now, the original casino from what I believe. Can you guess who this belonged to? Ariana Grande. This is Ariana Grande's denim outfit. It doesn't say much about it. It just says uh, she wore it. All right, throwback, 2000s, Avril Lavigne. Canadian pop rock hit maker Avril Lavigne wore this outfit on stage during her 2008 world tour. Okay, this is by one of the original doors here in the casino that goes out to one of the other parking garages. Jimmy Buffett signed guitar. I had no idea this was here. Laid back Florida icon Jimmy Buffett signed this Yamaha 12 string. That's pretty cool. As I was expressing the other day at Margaritaville at Universal Studios, I never got to see him play. I one time had tickets to see him across the street from here at the Florida State Fairgrounds, and I was uh, I had to sell the tickets back because I was hard up on cash at the time. My worst regret, 
One of my worst regrets ever, not seeing Jimmy Buffett play. Rest in peace. Man, I love his music. Very chill. And this wardrobe right here, worn by Clarence Clemens of Bruce Springsteen's E Street Band. Worn on stage. Rest in peace, Clarence has passed away. Very cool outfit there. So this is the northwest side of the casino. This is where the actual Hard Rock Cafe is. I've never actually eaten here. I always eat somewhere else. Maybe someday I'll, I will eat at the actual Hard Rock Cafe at Tampa's Hard Rock Hotel Casino. This is owned by the Seminole Nation, by the way. The Native American tribe. Seminole Hard Rock Hotel Casino. Elvis Presley. Here's a great example of the work Nudie's Rodeo Tailors did for Elvis Presley. This rhinestone bedazzled pink jumpsuit was worn, made for the king in the early 70s. Look at the rhinestone. I feel like he had to wear this on Easter, right? Like a rhinestone cowboy. I know that's not his song. That's what it makes me think of. Bo Diddley's Funk Box guitar. Bo Diddley from Florida, I believe. I know he's buried here. That's a cool looking guitar. And legendary guitarist Bo Diddley. That's amazing. And then over here you have Ronnie James Dio's outfit. Whoa. Okay, I know I've seen that before. Rest his soul. Ronnie James Dio. And then down here you have his guitar. And I believe it's signed. To the Hard Rock, God bless, Ronnie James Dio. That's amazing. Big fan of Dio. I loved him in Black Sabbath. That was my favorite years. No offense to Ozzy, I love that too, but some of the best music right there. And they've got all kinds of food here. Of course, just about the same as you see at every Hard Rock. Burgers, salads, wings, ribs, dessert. It's a nice layout here they have here too. Check this out. Peek over the edge for you. That's what it looks like. And then there's a stage all the way at the back. So they have concerts back there. Rod Stewart's yellow suit. My dad was a huge fan of Rod Stewart. He actually saw him in concert across the way here at the Florida State Fairgrounds. He's known for kicking soccer balls. Signing soccer balls and kicking them out into the crowd during his shows. So my dad almost came close to getting one. I remember him telling the story about how some uh, some lady kind of like came in between him and grabbed the ball. It was coming straight towards him and she like did one of these maneuvers and got the soccer ball. But he still, he, he's, he had a good time. My mom and my dad went to that concert that night. I wish I could have been there right across the street. I like Ross Stewart. No way. I'm gonna have to go inside and take a look at this, but that's Michael Jackson's fedora. Holy cow. Also, Mick Mars, who just retired from Motley Crue, the guitarist. I like to call him the glue of Motley Crue. That's his guitar right there. Looks like he played this. Originally built for uh, Rick James, but wound up in Mick Mars' hand. Wow. That's some unique history. Striped Charvel guitar. That was built for Rick James, but ended up with Mick Mars, that's cool. And now inside the Hard Rock Cafe, looking out. That's Pete Wentz's bass from Fall Out Boy. Wasn't a huge fan of Fall Out Boy, but they were a big thing when I was in high school. I did kind of see them in concert one time at Warped Tour from the side. Also, I knew someone that dated Pete when I was in high school. And speaking of legendary guitarists, Richie Sambora signed his acoustic guitar here. Phenomenal guitar player from New Jersey, of course. Bon Jovi, who doesn't love Bon Jovi? Some good rock ballads from the 80s. Richie Sambora, arguably one of the best guitarists of that era. Yeah, this is what I wanted to take a closer look. The glare, you can kind of see it. This is Michael Jackson's hat, his fedora. And it says, uh, the late great Michael Jackson used this fedora for the mega iconic his Billie Jean performance during his 1997 tour. And I could go all the way around these walls. There's memorabilia everywhere. Oh wow, I see some Bruce Springsteen there. We'll get that, definitely. But I just want to show you that the one of their mini gift shops is right off the restaurant here, right to the right. 
the boss, Bruce Springsteen. I believe that's his hat there. Also signed photograph. And it looks like this might be one of the set sheets. Yeah, it's an early draft of the fever. Wow. That is Bruce Springsteen off his hands right, right there. Cool. And I've never walked in here. All the way to the back, the stage area for the Hard Rock Cafe. It'd be cool to eat there and sit there and listen to some music, man. Especially if it's uh, one of your favorite artists. That's the type of stuff that happens here. That's really cool. There's also some more memorabilia to the wall here to the right I want to look at. Like Janis Joplin's scarf. That's incredible. Hold on, let me zoom in. There you go, you can see that better. I'll try to read the sign for you. It's very small. Legendary rocker Janis Joplin. Someone, another rock star that was taken from us way too soon. The force of nature that was Janis Joplin wore this tasseled silk shawl on stage with her post Big Brother group, the Cosmic Blue Band. Bob Dylan. Check out that guitar. It's seen better days. What is the story on this? When Dylan performed at the Live Aid concert in 1985, it was accompanied by none other than Keith Richards and Ron Wood. The battered old Martin is the guitar Keith played during the set. So it says Bob Dylan. I think it was his guitar, but Keith Richards played it. 1985 historic Live Aid. That's also the concert that Queen played that legendary performance. Many other bands played there. And the bass of Jerry Sheff. Elvis Presley's bass guitarist. Wow. This old Fender Precision Bass saw both studio and stage in the hands of Elvis Presley's legendary bass player, Jerry Sheff. Jerry has appeared on some truly iconic recordings, including The Doors, L.A. Woman. And here's a look back at the restaurant. Not too busy right now. I actually would think about eating here, but I think I have my heart set on sushi. We'll see. I was about to walk out of the cafe, but then I came into this room, and there's more stuff in here. Wait till you see this. An outfit wore by Madonna? No information. I would say that's from the 80s, if I had to guess. And then to the left and to the right, jewelry. We'll go to the left first. Jewelry, necklace, and earrings worn by Cher. Beautiful, isn't it? Awesome. Chris the girl would love this. Check it out, babe. And then over here, Liza Minnelli. A watch, a string of pearls, and a wristband. Liza Minnelli. I always think of Liza Minnelli and one of my favorite comedies of all time with Dudley Moore, Arthur. She did a great job in that. She's hilarious. I have seen Shakira in concert before. Yeah. Long time ago in Orlando at the old stadium. Yeah, I went with a friend. <laughs> It was a great time. I really enjoyed it. Shakira, Shakira. Doing the best I can with the glare. Looks like uh, a wristband worn by Stevie Nicks right here. I'm trying to show you the detail, that's a little better. And then this over here, some sort of a medallion that also belonged to Stevie Nicks. Barbara Streisand, another string of pearls. Not as large as Liza Minnelli's and a lot more pearls on there. The classic hard rock shirt. When I was a kid, it was cool to collect these shirts from all the different locations. I had a Hard Rock Cafe Indianapolis shirt. I remember going to Hard Rock Cafe Indianapolis when it opened up right in front. I can't think of, I think it's Banker's Life Stadium today, but it was Conseco Fieldhouse when it opened up. The Pacers, where the Indiana Pacers NBA basketball team plays. There's a Hard Rock Cafe right across the street. I think that was the first Hard Rock Cafe I ever went to. The second would have been at Universal Studios in Orlando, but these were classic. They still are. This is the classic shirt right here. And today they have all kinds of merchandise, Hard Rock merchandise. And here in the back of the store, an outfit worn by Eminem. Shout out to the biggest Eminem fan I know, Scott on tape. Look at this. It's right here back behind the cash register. Got the Detroit gear going. Eminem showed his hometown pride with this Detroit shirt 
in his 2006 video, Like Toy Soldiers. There you go, that was worn in, this, in that video. I do like me some hip hop, 90s hip hop. Eminem qualifies. I like that stuff. I don't, I really, I'm out of touch with hip hop today. I couldn't tell you who's who. Eddie Vedder's guitar. Eddie Vedder of Pearl Jam emerged from the ultra fertile Seattle scene of the early 90s to become one of the biggest American rock bands in history. Much of the band's power is courtesy of their incredible vocalist, Eddie Vedder. He signed this Gibson Les Paul. Right there is his uh, signature. Kind of make it out right there. Jail me day. I love that. You can sing Pearl Jam songs and you really don't have to say words. You just have to get the sound right. <laughs> legend, legend. Gwen Stefani from No Doubt wore this outfit right here. Check this out. It says, when wore this lovely little ensemble on stage, with no doubt, in the pages of the People magazine as one of the top 10 trendsetters of 1997. Trent Reznor's shirt from Nine Inch Nails. Talk about 90s rock bands. Looks like he wore this during their 1994 album, The Downward uh, Spiral. Groundbreaking, Nine Inch Nails. And this shirt here belonged to the one and only godfather of soul, James Brown. Wore this metallic cape on stage while performing at the legendary Apollo Theater in New York City. That's awesome. Got a cool button right there. I've got soul, and I'm super bad. And right here near the center, of the main casino, right smack down in the middle, there's this bar area, which is a square, and then you have slot machines all the way around us, just to show you what's going on here. This suit, who do you think wore this suit? The late, great David Bowie wore this stylish suit for a 1993 photo shoot with photographer, with photographer Michael Hadi. The images were used for Bowie's 1993 album cover, Black Tie, White Noise. And if you've seen that album, you'll remember the suit. Very iconic looking. Rest in peace, David Bowie, also born on January 8th, as Elvis Presley was, and my dad, all born on January 8th. And check out this NFL Pick Your Team slot machine. They've got my favorite team up right now, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Also, some of my favorite food, pizza, hot dogs, popcorn. Looks like the jackpot's going for around $10,397. This is a cool slot machine. I don't know if I'll play this one. I'll show you a couple of the slot machines. There used to be a cool Ghostbusters one in here. Two minute drill. And their famous steakhouse here at the Hard Rock Casino, Council Oaks. They've got a nice little bar here, not quite open yet. Looks like they have a premium raw bar on Sundays, 10 to 2. Premium raw bar, unlimited cocktails, USDA prime carving station, made to order omelets and pancakes. Here's more of their menu here. Looks like an eight ounce filet mignon is 55 bucks, all the way up to an 80 ounce, uh, I'm sorry, 24 ounce, $80 bone-in ribeye. For an a la carte steakhouse, premium steakhouse, that's not too bad. And here I thought it would be open, but the rock and roll sushi bar, the sushi joint, I was expecting to be open. Not open yet, it doesn't open up till later. Darn, I thought this was open like 24 seven, but I guess not, I guess I was wrong. Last time I ate here, I ate at this table. Cool little fountain table here. But this will be open in a little bit. Sammy Davis Jr. This overcoat was custom tailored for Sammy Davis Jr. This is hiding back here. We're up here on the second level. Part of the Rat Pack. All right, so I got 20 bucks. I'm gonna play a slot machine. Should I play The Mask? It's party time. Somebody stop me. All right, I think I'm gonna play it. Looks like I could win up to 10,500 bucks. Oh, jackpot. All right, I just, I think, oh my gosh, I just won seven bucks. I might cash cents. out. All right, I kept playing. I'm still 15 cents ahead, I'm gonna cash out. And the food court, and I believe this food court is late night. They've got pizza, 
They've got like a health spot. They've got ramen spot. All kinds of things to eat in here. It smells great. It looks like it's just good old traditional New York style Chinese food. Mmm. Smells good. At first I thought I was gonna eat in here, but I, I think I might wait. Pizza by the slice. When was the last time you saw a cigarette vending machine? That actually worked. Because this one's out of order. But really, you don't see these every day. Only at casinos and bars. Very nostalgic. And now inside Rainmaker. A store specifically owned by the Seminole Tribe. Lots of goodies in here. Very awesome stuff like jewelry, necklaces, blankets, toys. Cool that the Seminole have their own store in here. Of course, it's their hotel. They also have their own jail here and their own police department. Also, their own emergency response services. They've got everything here. And right here in the middle of the floor before the front desk, the check-in right behind the glass there, Lady Gaga's custom jacket she wore on stage when she performed at the halftime show at the Super Bowl in 2017. This piece was designed by Atelier Versace and crafted by Antonio Erzi. I know I, I butchered those names. And I just made it outside. That was a fun time. Just walking through, seeing all that memorabilia. Didn't take too long. That was like an hour in there, I think. Check out the winds. It really picked up here. Bad weather. It's better on the inside. So much fun. I hope you enjoyed that adventure. Look how the doors close on their own. They've got guitars. See the guitars? I thought they were gonna close. <laughs> Can you imagine the electric bill in there? There it goes. Closing. Nope, coming back open. Those are closing. <laughs> Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Really cool to see that Elvis stuff and that Beatles stuff, especially the John Lennon jacket. I think that was my favorite piece. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Through the video, come and check out Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino for yourself. Fun for the whole family, of course. I believe you have to be 21 or up. You may be able to eat at the restaurants if you're 18 and up, but of course you can't gamble. So if you wanna walk in here and just check out the memorabilia like I did today, you're, you're okay to do so as I just did. So come check it out. If you liked the video, I hope you liked it. Please give it a thumbs up. And if it was your first time here, subscribe below. As I always say, there's always much ahead. And I'm going on a trip, going out of town very soon. Excited about this one. Gonna do something I've always wanted to do. Know you're awesome. Know you're loved. And no matter who you are, what you're going through, just know there's always much ahead. Man, it's windy here. Look at those skies. Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. I'll be back. Look forward to coming back and seeing what they change and update. Every time I come back here, it's different. They add new stuff. They change it. The neon has been turned on. All right, guys. See you next time. See you real soon. Far away.